Um, let's go. Uh, oh, I'm bad at this. <laughs> All right, let's go. And intro. Let's. Please let me know if you can hear that. Understand what's going on here. It's kind of glitching in and out a little bit. As it likes to. It's cool. I think it's the screen. I have a lot going on. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm sorry that glitched out a little bit. Not sure what's going on. Um, feel free to do whatever introduction they told you. <laughs> No worries at all. Um, I was just gonna introduce you guys to Brittany. Uh, Brittany is going to be our speaker talk about anime today. Uh, she is a freelance graphic designer and illustrator based out of you know, here in Colorado Springs. Her influences are in her work are anime and manga, or manga, is that how you say it? I always manga. Say it manga, okay. <laughs> Future funk and the ideas are based on Afrofuturism. Her digital work is created with the digital pen, tablet, Photoshop, and Clip, clip Paint Studio. Gosh. Uh, if you guys have any questions at all during this presentation, feel free to put them in the chat, and we will get to them as we can. And yeah, I will throw it over to you, Brittany. Hi, nice to meet everybody. Um, so thank, that was a lovely introduction. Um, basically, the simplest way I put it is I'm professional oh, like anime trash. <laughs> uh, I Again, they are correct. I'm currently a graphic designer. The picture you see on the screen, uh, not, not the one behind me, that's that's Ava. I'm not that cool to draw that. But the one on the screen with me is something I created. You can actually find it in old Colorado City um, by the, I guess, bar Supernova. It's like right in front of it. So I was asked to talk about anime because I guess last year um, some of the students thought it was cool to talk about anime for like and like 45 minutes, which I was supposed to be talking about art and design and it turned into an anime discussion. So this might not be the proper way to do it, but I'm going to kind of just answer questions that y'all have and see what I can do. And while we're doing that, if you want me to see me do workflow and like Photoshop things I do, totally tell me, uh, I, I'm really gonna let it freewheel. So if you have questions on anime, Photoshop, whatever, feel free. And yes, I do know a tiny something about um, VO work or voice acting work for some of you that might ask. I've seen it in downtown Springs. Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> And if there are no questions, I'll just start. I'll keep talking. <laughs> I don't think you want that. If you guys would like, also, you do not have to, uh, unless Brittany's not okay <laughs> with this, uh, you don't have to stay muted. You can unmute yourself as well instead of typing in the chat box. Mm -hmm. And I'm so used to this. So one thing I was going to do, um, like right now, I was basically busy setting up a stream deck or stream labs so I could be ready with something. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put up my workflow. It'll just take me a second to pop up Photoshop here, and then we'll swap over to that uh, while I just work on a, honestly, let's go display capture and say, okay. Okay. And yeah, since no one seems to have any questions yet, that's what we're going to do. Let's see. Can you see my screen? Oh, ho, ho, that's fun. <laughs> Did it repeat? I hope not. No. Okay. So right now we have a little thing of Ebisu from Doro Hedoro. Uh, it's one of my favorite animes, but because the creator cracks me up, if you haven't heard of it, it's on Netflix. Um, I don't know how popular it really was. I, I did catch up with a lot of anime this season and I, I really don't know, like with something being called anime, it's a little ambiguous. So uh, let's go into, maybe I'll talk a few things about myself, what I've done anime. As you saw, I had a picture that was up downtown Colorado Springs, and it was for a Black artist event that was going on in town. And I decided, hey, let's go ahead and, you know, I had a friend suggest I should put my picture in, which I was like, I, I don't do too much. I've also done, um, I don't know how many of you know, but there's the rainy day anime sign. I'm the one that made that. 
I just followed what my um, buddies over there wanted and made that the illustration and the design work for what they asked. If you see any of my stuff, it's a little extra. <laughs> it's the best way to put it. Let's go 1920 by 1080. So we're going to, that's the illustration I had started, but I don't know. That's Asuka. That's some more Dororo hit Dororo because for sure. It's, and of course, please uh, go ahead and talk to me or, um, oh, how do you find your style? Sorry. I'm, it's hard for me to work in Photoshop and see the chat. So if uh, the moderators could help me with some of that, that'd be fantastic. Not a problem. Okay. Um, so how did I find my style? Oh man, that was a lot of trial and error. It's more, try to think of like, who do you like as artist? Like who are your favorite style people? Like one of my favorites is actually, she made this little notepad I have right here. Her name is Bara Chan. And I really liked how she did thick lines. And I had been trying to practice how she did thick lines, but maybe I like the eyes of I don't know, let's see, the, the persona designer. And we try to do that. So you try to mix the two. So when initially trying to find your style, don't be afraid to experiment with other people's art style to find your own because practice makes it perfect in trying to find that thing, sort of thing. Um, my art style is very weird when it comes to design work, but I'm very eclectic <laughs> uh, when it comes down to my stuff. So we're gonna throw Ebby Sue in here and just, gonna have her like dancing i i also would not ever suggest doro he doro for a lot of folks dance <laughs> jessica yeah. i'd like to know do you have any affordable alternatives to photoshop yes <laughs> so there are a lot of free programs that you can use there's one that's by it's called krita that one's free there's medibank studio which is really fantastic if you're trying to do inking like I, I've used it a lot. Uh, the rainy day sign, I actually inked that entire thing in Medibang and then I put the photo, the, the graphic assets on it through Photoshop. And the best one that was already mentioned in my intro is Clip Paint Studio, which I do use that one very, very often to make all kinds of sketches. It's, um, if you're lucky, usually it's like 50 bucks, which I know you're, you know, in high school, middle school, stuff like that, it can be kind of expensive, but wait till there's a sale through either clip paint itself or through, uh, oh gosh, I'm sorry. I bring link a lot with this, uh, clip paint itself, or there's a thing called humble bundle. Uh, they're also really good if you're trying to find really like amazing deals on video games and whatnot, and you can get it for like $25. Liliana says, what's a good first drawing tablet and pens that are affordable? So a lot of people will tell you go with web, uh, Wacom and Wacom is a good tablet. If you can get their like hundred dollar basic tablet, you, you will be good. You'll be set for a long time. My, my wa old Wacom still works. Um, I actually, I have the tablet I use currently and in the world of tablets, this is actually cheap for the kind of tablet it is. I use this. It is a XP pen. They have a lot of affordable tablets that start anywhere from like 50 bucks going up. This bad boy here was 400 and it doesn't look like anything, but it's actually a screen tablet. And these are all the button controls, including knobs and whatnot you can use to help create your work. I think there's also um, Huion. Huion makes really good tablets and they start around the $50 range as well. And for XP pen, um, I can't remember exactly which one my, my best friend uses, but she's had no issues. She streams on Twitch and does art live all the time and her art's really, really good. <laughs> Alessandra says, is an Apple pen and iPad good? Yes. I know a lot of artists that do use that. Um, one of my favorite artists, I have her, don't mind all of my stickers, but this girl, her name is Patricia Colors and she, I believe she made this with an Apple pen. I don't know if you can see that super well, this little Oni, but she used the Apple pen and um, you can use, there's like a Photoshop Express, but I think it's called Fresco. And I've heard a lot of people say good things about using that for drawing. There also might be something native in Apple that you can do the same thing with as well. 
So Aiden wants to know, what advice do you have for someone who's going to college for design and illustration? What can I expect and what should I keep in mind? Ooh. <laughs> so you have to remember one thing. Most colleges kind of put illustration and design in two different boats, even though you use both of them daily, I'm going to be honest. Um, what to expect is there's going to be a lot, a lot of just traditional drawing. They're going to have you drawing apples. They're going to have you drawing naked people, um, just to get the human form or to get form essentially is one of the first things you're going to learn. So don't be discouraged if what you like to draw doesn't, um, you can't frequently do that in college. That would be the main thing. Uh, design classes, they're not required, but I can tell you from doing it professionally, take, um, if your college does not offer this with your course, be sure to take some sort of color theory course, because a lot of real world applications that that actually becomes very important. It also makes your art better because you understand what colors work together, what don't work together. And sometimes learning the basics of what people believe works will help you expand and create your own style for things that you would think should not work. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Diego asks, are there any good art platforms that are free so that artists like me who can't really buy stuff can make art? Of course. Um, are you meaning like, I'm guessing sharing art or like just being broke and needing art programs? Um, if it's sharing art, there are plenty of platforms that exist. I used to go on DeviantArt long ago because I am old and I would share my art there. Instagram is a good platform as well. Well, I, I, I lie. That's whoops, half and half. My bad. My, my video went out. <laughs> that was my bad. Um, let me make sure I'm back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Instagram does work if you know how to tag it really well, but can be really frustrating. My friend is actually doing pretty well on Twitch sharing her art. Uh, she's got, she's been doing it for about a year now, and I, I'm a frequent guest on her channel. And she has about almost 600 followers. And most of those followers came like recently with a very active Discord that's like following her art. Um, if you're talking about share, like, you know, actually creating art. Um, those programs I mentioned in the beginning are probably going to be your best platform and clip paint actually does have a feature within it where you can share your art through clip paint. I haven't really messed around with it, but I see it frequently appear on my stuff. Just remember that though, if you do put it out on Instagram or anything to, uh, make sure to, what is it, a uh, watercolor it or whatever the one that put you watermarking. Put yeah. Yeah. Always watermark your stuff. People will steal your your ideas in a heartbeat. I would even say if you can, there is a feature and I'm not sure if clip paint has it. I haven't tested it yet, but I know Photoshop does where you can save metadata. So if somebody said, download it, your art, um, just doing like a, a Google search, you can say, Hey, that's mine. And that metadata, if, cause I don't know fully if they do an Instagram screen cat and there's no watermark that you can do, but if you watermark the original file and somebody takes it, then you should be protected. Jessica says, how do you get your art out there and how do you not lose your passion after capitalizing on digital art? <laughs> oh man. Okay. So I'm going to be honest. The easiest way to do it is when you work, I've been doing this for years and I almost lost that passion myself. Um, I worked for many other companies and I just started losing the flame of doing digital art. And what I found out is sometimes just do stuff for yourself. Don't care about what an audience thinks. Uh, because at the end of the day, are you doing it because you want people to notice your art? Or are you doing it because you love it? If you love it, always make time to do things for yourself. I had to learn that the hard way. So that's why you'll see me, like I do graphic design and I do very boring graphic design as my day job to be frank. However, whenever I do um, my own things, like 
I'm going to swap back to my main streams or to my stream talk for a second while I try to find um, an example of things that I do on my off time through ice Instagram. And I did it for me. It made me feel better, but I would say that's your best bet. So I'll answer some more questions while I'm waiting for that. It might be a little slow because I'm eating up all my data doing this. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Aiden says, besides watermarks and metadata, are there any other ways to protect your art online? No, not really. Um, so it's really watermarking, signing it, and and, and metadata. There's not too, too much you can do. Uh, one simple way though would be if you want to share, don't share things that you're scared you would lose, like kind of be ready somebody might steal it. Um, my favorite artist actually had this problem years ago where she found out her artwork was being used on like a Russian candy bar. <laughs> And once it's overseas, there's nothing you can do. In the United States, you can sue, um, essentially sue or put in a cease and desist with a lot of platforms like Teespring has stuff like that. However, I'm pretty sure I've had my art stolen and it was put on Teespring and then Teespring said, I stole my own work. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I don't have a better answer for that. Just it, it comes with the territory. Let's see, where did it go? I'm really, I apologize, I'm really bad. Profile. So let's see, where did it go? Something I did for myself. And then I'll swap it back to my um, screen. So you guys, y'all can see what's on my screen. I don't, I, I have nothing to hide. So for instance, let's swap a Roo back here. This picture right here is something I did for fun to help keep my creative juices going when I was working at a vitamin factory and all they wanted me to do every day was legitly just take pictures of <laughs> vitamins, like the pill and the bottle. So I took my photography experience from that job and I created something fun that did reignite my spirit. So this is my accessorist um, picture. It's an earring. The shark is an earring <laughs> that I own and I photographed and photoshopped into this. So that's one way. Um, I also like going into, like when I go to anime conventions, which I go to a lot, um, you know, before the now times, I would go to an anime convention and there was so much cool stuff going on that I came back re-energized. So sometimes just going to a new place, doing something exciting and new, that can also help rejuvenate your juices and just getting away from the digital art per se. Liliana asks, what are some good channels on YouTube or Twitch that do art? I love watching people drawing while drawing myself. <laughs> Gotcha. Uh, so <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't, she'd be mad at me, but my friend, uh, my friend Algernon Blue on Twitch, she's really good. She follows some decent people there. Um, on YouTube, there are actually a few people I watch most of the time just to get like, I'm buying art kind of advice. So I'm actually checking right now because I don't remember their names off the top of my head. I just love watching them work. Um, let's see, art, it, it, I usually, for me, I try to just look at people that have styles that I like. That's the best way I can describe it. So like recently there's this guy called Marco Busi, M-A-R-C-O-B-U-C-C-I. And he did a tutorial on how to paint characters that look like the arcane characters. And it, it, it's just fascinating to watch his process. Um, I, I'm like trying to find, there we go. And Muhammad, I'm, I'm going to butcher his name. So I'm going to spell it A-G-B-A-D-I. I really like his videos. Um, I think he does a good job in trying to show you how while actually working himself. And most of the time when I'm doing art like that, I actually just chill out and listen to some music and just let it, let my hand take me where it goes. Um, most of my favorite artists don't actually make videos, which is kind of weird, but whatever. 
And Jessica put out a comment saying, my friend got his art stolen and used on a food truck for like four years. Yep, that does happen. And it it sucks so bad. Like, unless you have the money to lawyer up or find a lawyer that'll do it for free. Specifically, don't just get any lawyer. You have to get a lawyer that specializes in um, either art or I'm trying to think of the term. It's basically like a creative copyright or um, IP, intellectual pro- intellectual property, um, where they can go after that person and basically p- submit a cease and desist or make them pay out what's owed. Uh, it, it even happens on professional levels. When I work at um, the pharmaceutical company, one of my coworkers, she worked for another company, I won't say the names, And the company used somebody's fonts. Like you don't think about those kind of things, but somebody made that font and they used a font that they just downloaded and it was free for uh, personal use, but not free for everybody use. And they used it in a national advertising campaign. So once the creator of the font found out, they sued this company to, pardon my language, high hell, and they did get a payout, but the company took a big hit. So it, like I said, it happens all the time. And if you have the time and money, lawyer up the the easiest way I can say it. I remember seeing an article about a, one of the people who lives here in Colorado Springs, where she kept getting messages on Instagram saying they loved her art. And she's like, I don't know where people got that art. And then they found out that a Walmart was actually selling her art. Mm -hmm. And the only reason they found out is because they didn't take the watermark out of the, they couldn't get it out of the hair. They took it everywhere yep. else because she put it on there three times and they took it yep. out everywhere else, but not the hair. Exactly. It happens all the time. Even I've like the few times I've done art, I've seen sketches I did years ago and somebody slapped it on like something weird. Luckily in that case, the person wasn't selling it, but I didn't necessarily give them permission to use it in the way they were using it. <laughs> Maya says, how do you get contracts for working on shows slash anime? Do you work as a contractor or do you try to get hired into the into their companies? So I try to get hired into a lot of companies. Um, for most things, like I mentioned about VO work, I have a friend that's a voice actor. And weirdly enough, I've done a little bit of voice acting work, but not in anime. My friend in particular has done a little bit in anime and a little bit in um, video game work. And it's it's kind of weird because essentially you turn into like a freelancer unless they like, like you a lot and they keep wanting you to come back. So my friend, he's done, um, oh gosh, he was in a recent anime, something that was really like, he was a very unforgettable character. So even if you try to hunt him down, um, (laughs) it, it becomes a little strange and I'm actually trying to find the game that he was in. And he told me that it was fascinating the process where they send you in like you'll send in um say a video and or an audio clip and I've done this and you won't hear from them for months so you just assume they don't want you and then months later you get a call back and they're like hey um we want you to try out for this voice acting gig so you come in you try out and they have you leave and then you don't hear from them for again for a while and then they are like hey we have this role that you fit or can you come record or can you record from your house today? And that's honestly the way that it seems like it happens if you're trying to get in on that front facing side, back facing side, you have to have a really strong portfolio and you have to figure out what kind of job do you want to do? Because most people are like, I want to be in anime or I want to you know, be in comics. And it's like, okay, do you want to be like an inker? Do you want to be a, a do you want to do the sketches and character designs? Do you want to be an inker? Do you want to be like, one of the finalizing people? Do you want to be a graphic designer? There's so much more when you go into working in anime or anything than just, I want to be an anime. So voice acting side, don't be shocked if you don't hear from anybody for a bit. Um, art, more of the artistic side, um, you're, you have to have a strong portfolio. And then if you're in marketing, advertising, like if you were doing advertising for a series or advertising with Crunchyroll, um, basic college classes are probably going to be your best bet, but have some experience while still keeping knowledge of what's going on with the anime scene. Dante wants to know, do you think it's good to use art as a baseline 
or for other mediums too, like music or game creation. To use art as the base media is what I'm uh, thinking. Do you, do you think it's good to use art as a baseline for other mediums too, like music or game creation? Oh, people do that all the time. They've been doing it for years. Um, there's plenty of, for instance, in the anime scene, there was the Afro Samurai. The Afro Samurai was actually started um, some y'all might be too young for this um, if you're not cool <laughs> but it started as basically these works of art by a, a prominent illustrator and then people like those works of art so then they kind of evolved into like a short comic and then the short comic evolved into the actual anime itself so I think it's always a good idea every piece of art starts probably from some other piece of art it's pretty rare to uh, I don't know just fart out an idea you think sounds good without some baseline and usually an artistic baseline is the best way to go you don't want a corporate level <laughs> so we got some more questions to come on through oh okay <laughs> i didn't think i'd have this many questions but cool <laughs> It's kind of funny because last year I did this and um, I mostly got questions about stuff I like in anime. So they switched to anime and now I'm getting questions about art. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. I guess I'll keep talking till I get another question in. Let's see. Seems like you got to start saying that more often because once you say that a question comes in. <laughs> <laughs> Aiden says, I got a question related to technique. How do you okay. make something look metallic and software like Pro Procreate? I've been trying to get shiny metallic effects on one of my OC's guns and it looks pretty bad. Oh, okay. So to make something look metallic, there is the janky Photoshop way. So let me pop back in here and we're gonna use Ebisu here. And really, if you're using something like Procreate and you're trying to paint on things, you wanna start with kind of just like, we're gonna use this for instance, and you're gonna layer it. So <laughs> you start I'm not with like, you. oh, okay. I'm guessing there's some trolley comments. It's cool. <laughs> so basically when we layer things on, I know this seems really weird and, janky but trust me one thing is you got to remember believe in the process look at a piece of metal and you'll notice that it has something of what's called a natural gradient and when you have those gradients you're, you're trying to literally mimic that so i would say i guess instead of me being like here here's exactly how you do a tutorial because i'm so smart um <laughs> basically you want to kind of think like I know this looks really weird, like a really like a doo doo hot dog, but <laughs> okay, let me stop. But that's the basis of anything that looks metallic. You're going to have your darks, your lights, and your highlight. You're going to have your darks, your mediums, and your highlights. And depending on where the metal is shining, you know, you want your highlight to be the closest point pointing at the light source. And then from there, you kind of make a gradation out. So I guess to explain this fact further, I'm trying to find a, uh, a blur or a blend tool and it'll make more sense. Where essentially you're trying to get all of this to blend into each other and make really nice metals. You also, like when you wanna go deep, deep, deep into that well, um, you can, I, I don't know, you can do other cool stuff too, so. There we go, smudge tool. I love this thing. Um, they also do have it in clip paint in most of their programs. So as you can see, it starts blending, but as you keep blending, everything blurs into one another. So if you're making metal, this is kind of the basis where you can do something quick like that and just keep layering it. So now it looks like a poo smudge instead of like a hot dog. So we're gonna go ahead and swap to, I don't know, like we need more to really sell it. So we're gonna put some more in there, some more there, and then just keep blending it. it it's really just keep, if you're doing it with a paintbrush, digital paintbrush, whatever, keep blending it. And there are tons of Photoshop tutorials or whatever paint program tutorials to show you how to use it. 
um, the quick lazy way, which is what I normally like to do <laughs> by making the program make all the stuff. Also, Mods, tell me if I'm being inappropriate. <laughs> I have nothing on it right now. No thoughts in this. Okay. Um, right. this, is the, this is where I started. This is the question I laughed on. So, uh, Jessica, you win on this one. Uh, her first question was, what are your favorite animes? Then they came back with the question of, uh, is the shark wearing fishnets? She's not wearing fishnet. Well, no, not today. So uh, there's an episode of Doro Hedoro where she literally comes out in a shark outfit and that's their mascot. So she's playing in baseball uh, <laughs> pants. Uh, my favorite anime, gosh, I have so many. Um, if we're going old school, my favorite anime is Slayers. I legitly have like three or four Slayers figures sitting near me right now. Um, I'm also a JoJo stan, so I still need to get caught up on um I believe it's Stone Ocean is the recent one. And I've really, like this last season, I've been really into Ranking of Kings. It looks like some Studio Ghibli kind of thing, but I promise it's not. It's It goes hard. <laughs> Alessandra said she didn't even know there was a face in Shark. <laughs> yeah. I know, it's, it's, it's Ebi Sue. She's to put it frankly, Doro Hedoro is very, very uh, dark. <laughs> and to begin it, she gets her face bitten off. That, that's how it starts. <laughs> uh, Liliana asked, what's some good romance animes? Ooh, it depends on what kind of uh, romance you're looking at. So I went back in time and recently watched... Um, Toradora and it was a very cute one there was some stuff I was like I don't know but that was a very cute romance anime um I feel like in recent times they haven't really made like super great romance animes it's like they've kind of just fallen into that isekai trap and in, in those of you that I mean obviously if you're here you know what an isekai is which I guess mods it's a uh, somehow you go to another world be it you got hit by a car or <laughs> you got hit by a car and woke up in another world or you played a video game and got sucked into it into another world that's the whole isekai genre it, it just seems like isekai bait but i would definitely say toradora um there's one called love i i think it's say i love you which is really good and there's one i can think of and I can't remember the name for life me. So I'm so, so sorry. The genre, my, romance is not my favorite genre, to be honest. Um, my favorite genre is horror. <laughs> so just so everybody knows, we have about 10 minutes remaining. Um, so if you guys have any other questions, throw them out there now while you got the time. Ooh, I dropped things, don't worry. Um, I guess go ahead and drop those comments, but I will say one thing, if you're trying to get into making art, because I said this last year and I'm really going to reinforce this, make sure you get paid what you are worth because people will try to rip you up all the time. Um, one good place is, this is probably an older edition, but this is the Graphic Arts Guilds book. It is the Pricing and Ethical, Pricing and Ethical Guidelines Handbook. And it's a really good starting point if you're ever confused on what should I charge somebody? There's illustrate, it goes into illustrations, logo design. If it has something that could be considered graphic arts, including animation, video, stuff like that, it's in this book and you can get it. Just get a used copy. Don't, don't get a new copy. They're expensive, but if you get a used copy, it's like anywhere from 15 to 20 bucks. Uh, so Piper would like to know, what is your Instagram? Oh, you want to follow that? Okay. Um, <laughs> let's get out of there. So I'll just pop it back on the screen. Green. Let's go. Whoop. And that's my Instagram up here. It is instagram.com slash star Lancer. Uh, just like my logo right here. If you wish to follow it, cool. Um, I make a lot of stuff like Instagram. I don't update nearly as much as I do. Um, like my youtube channel and that is somewhere in here probably oh no maybe not but i do have a youtube channel i just talk about anime and 
stuff like that. <laughs> Alessandra would like to know how should, uh, I'm sorry, this is kind of, how should you try to start to draw a human anime body? I think that's what the question is. Pretty so, much how, how do you draw an anime body? So that's kind of a weird thing because anime has so many forms. Like uh, take for instance, I'm gonna pull it up here. This is ranking of kings. Like you can tell that this little picture here in the corner, it looks very basic, but that's an anime. It's really good. Just saying, watch it. And it's really finding a style that you resonate with is probably the best way to get started. If you really want to make like accurate figures, I would say do figure drawing, like draw your own stuff and then go into figure drawing. So you know how to draw the human body. Once you learn how to draw the human body, you can contort it in any way you want and it won't look funny once you know the basics. Aiden says, is there a specific step-by-step -step process to follow when designing a character or creature? I would say, honestly, you don't even like start, if you wanna design a new character or creature, write it out, like write out what you imagine that's gonna look like. You can just draw it. Some people are really good at that. Some people like to take notes of, I want them to have green hair um, or write a backstory about the creature. And then from then there, you can make a new thing. You have to start with something first before you can just draw anything, I guess. I use music. <laughs> Jessica said you need to learn anatomy in order in order to break it. Exactly. That's the best way to put it. Um, that took me years to learn that. So draw what you want. Like, don't worry about being like, oh no, I need no anatomy right now. Draw what you feel like, but also practice anatomy. And over time, the two will kind of blend into one. Just don't be like me. The only thing I could draw is a smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I still don't think I'm that great of an artist. Like that video I opened with is literally a video I edited, not for this, but for something I'm working on <laughs> I, when I, I mean, should have been drawing. <laughs> seeing this picture that you have right next to your video, <laughs> that, I cannot do anything like that. <laughs> you want to know something funny about that? I actually drew that when I was at work. I, I was really frustrated and I started daydreaming and I did this little sketch really fast. And I was like, I like that. And then I just took it into Photoshop and paint clip paint and just I, that that's what I came out of my brain <laughs> so just so you know we have five minutes remaining okay um, so while you answer this question um just real quick I will go ahead and post into the chat a uh the word is in my head and it just flew away the uh evaluation there we go that's what the word was I will post an evaluation link in the chat if you guys can fill out the evaluation link, it helps not only ECOC to improve on our sessions in the future, um, but it also helps to um, it helps us give our uh, speakers some advice on how to take things in the future. Um, so if you guys can make sure to fill that out and be honest, it uh, it does ask for your email, um, but we don't pass the email on to the uh, speakers unless. Um, it's asked for or you guys ask us to pass it on or anything like that um but so it stays anonymous um so please be honest with it and so um this next question is from liliana she says do you have any tips for drawing hands oh no <laughs> no i i kid um make us basically the way to start is look at your own hand and if you notice your hand is kind of like a square shape that's the first way you can start and then you have little fingies. So you draw out from the fingertips and you can keep making it squares, but I like the matchstick method where you draw a little matchstick here, there, cause it makes it easy when you move your hand around. So hands are hard. <laughs> I've been doing art for years and I still haven't mastered hands. Like people that do, I, I have no idea. And like, yeah, we hand people I'm like, geez, that's all they practiced. <laughs> but like go with your little thingies and then just kind of draw it in and then alter it like look at your own hand always use a reference that's that's the best way to go once you practice enough you probably won't have to but like people holding things that's hard it's really hard <laughs> and um go ahead sorry 
Oh no, I was gonna say like if you guys have any like I, I really want to improve in telling you guys that like y'all, I'm sorry, y'all, um, things that are important to you know art or design. So I really want to know what do you guys want me to talk about? Because last year it was anime, and then this year it was titled anime, but I'm talking about drawing. So I'd like to know where if I do present again, what should I talk about? Just be prepared. Okay, that's all I had. <laughs> uh, Macy says, if you if you're in a creative stump, what would be the best way to get out of it? Hmm. There's a couple of ways. Um, like I said, try some going somewhere new, and I don't even mean like you have to travel out of state. Just go take a walk, go hang out with your dog, go do something, go somewhere new, go look at something new. Sometimes you can take, like for instance, with my earrings for the accessor cyst, I knew I liked my earrings and I like Photoshop. And I tried to really sit and think through what, how can I connect these two? And I decided to make art out of it. Um, it's the same with my, whenever I make YouTube videos, I try to think what do these two opposing ideas have to do with each other? And that helps break me out of like a creative slump. And sometimes just vibe into music or, I don't know, staring out at nothing. That helps too. Stare into the void. <laughs> Maya says, what was the title of that book you showed earlier? Ah, it is The Pricing and Ethical Guidelines um, Handbook. So it's by the Graphic Arts Guild. If you look them up, this book will probably appear. Yeah, it's uh, the hand. Uh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say it's the uh, Pricing and Ethical Guidelines Handbook. Jessica said that you should do both art and anime next time. I did do that last year and everyone talked anime. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, that is all the time that we have. We are just about one minute until we have to close out and head to the next session. Um, oh. So I did post a link if you do not have it to go to the closing session. Um, that is where they're just going to talk a little bit about more about some other things. They'll be giving away the, or not giving away, I guess, but tell, announcing the winners of laptops and scholarships. Um, so if you guys applied to that, head over there and check that out. If you did not apply for um, scholarships, if you're curious, laptops, everyone has already put in for a laptop. Um, so if you're here, you're in for a laptop. If you did not apply for scholarships and you are a junior or senior or in college next year, I would recommend applying because we got some pretty amazing scholarships. And we usually um, have it where you can, some of the scholarships are do it as you please. You can do an essay or you can do art or you can do um, a movie, whatever you wanted to do. So there's some pretty amazing scholarship opportunities out there. Um, and the scholarship awards will range from $500 all the way up to around $2,000, $3,000. So you can always use extra money for college. That's my recommendation. <laughs> I say go for that. And if that laptop is an i7 or 9.9, you're good to make most digital art <laughs> or a Mac. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks so much, everybody. Go on, head over to the next closing session and have a great day. Bye, everyone.